Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm gonna to talk about why you shouldn't chase cashback. And so recently I've done a lot of cashback videos where I talk about the many ways that you can maximize on the amount of cashback that you receive when you use cashback credit cards as well as cashback apps. And so I've received quite a few questions asking about how people can actually increase the amount of cashback that they receive and try to get maybe a certain amount that they earn per month or per year. And so using many different cashback apps, and I've reviewed many in the past, most recently, I've reviewed Flues and Slide, and in the past, I reviewed apps like Rakuten, the Drop app, and the Dosh app. And once you combine or create any combination of apps between cashback apps and stockback apps, and in addition, once you include the cashback that you receive from a credit card, you can really increase the amount of cashback that you receive on your regular purchases from day to day. And so essentially there are two ways that you can earn cash back. Of course, it all starts with a cash back credit card. And then the next step is to connect whatever cash back apps that are gonna give you the maximum amount of cash back or rewards in return for the purchases that you plan to make anyway. But also the only two true ways to increase the earnings are by increasing the amount of cash back you receive as a percentage per transaction, and then also increasing the number of transactions that you make in order to earn more cash back. Now, what we don't wanna do is the latter. We don't wanna increase the amount of transactions we have just for the sake of getting cash back. That's a big no-no because what you're essentially doing is spending more in order to get a minute amount of cash back. And while I call it minute, when you get cash back over a long period of time, once you consider all of the transactions that you're gonna make on a monthly or weekly basis, then all of those small amounts of cash back then actually end up adding into something more significant. And so that's why some people may consider cash back credit cards and cash back apps or the money that they receive from that, they may consider that passive income. Now, I personally, I did a video where I pose that question to whether or not cash back is really passive income. I personally don't believe it is passive income because you're not really working for it. What you're doing is that you're taking advantage or you're being rewarded for the spending that you're already doing. So I don't really consider that income since you're not providing a product or you're not providing a service, you're not actually working for it. You're basically being rewarded for giving credit cards and cash back apps the information about what you're spending your money on. And so because these questions have come up a lot recently, I wanted to talk about why it's important not to chase cash back and what you can do instead to maximize on the amount of cash back that you're gonna receive when you do use credit cards and cash back apps and stock back apps. So the first main point is to only buy what you would normally buy anyway. When you're making a purchase, the focus of you earning cash back should be just on maximizing maximizing the amount of cash back that you receive whenever you make a purchase. And so that the only way to do that is to focus on, okay, these are the things that I'm gonna spend money on every day or every week or every month. I know that I'm gonna make these purchases ahead of time and it's not something that I'm making in addition to what I would normally buy. Because at the end of the day, your average amount of cash back is gonna be a small amount compared to the actual transaction. And so if you can average 6% or more cash back, then that's really good once you combine credit cards because most credit cards you may get maybe 4% on a specific category, but the general cash back or on non-category purchases, you're probably gonna get between one to 2% just on your credit card. And so that's why stacking cash back apps can add another 1% or 2% or maybe a three or four or 5% in addition to the cash back that you're receiving on your credit card. And so while having more transactions will increase the amount of cash back that you receive over time, you don't wanna increase the number of transactions just for the purpose of earning more cash back. And one way that people do this is by creating unrealistic goals. And so that's the second point I wanna to get to is you shouldn't have any particular amount of cash back uh, as far as a dollar amount that you should aim for for every month. I don't recommend having any specific goal for the amount of money that you're gonna earn in cash back as far as the actual dollar amount because you can't really control that unless you know exactly how much you're gonna budget each month for what you're spending and you're still sticking to that. And anything that you're doing beyond that, all you're doing is just increasing your spending, which could be messing up your budget. 
and also putting you into more credit card debt because remember, as part of these cashback stacking strategies, you are using a credit card. And so if you're spending more than you normally would or you're spending more than your budget should accept, then you're gonna end up just having additional transactions that you don't need, thus increasing the amount of credit card debt that you have if you have any at all. And so my third point would be to not buy things just because you want to earn the cash back. Now there may be bonus days that different cash back apps may have, like they may have their anniversary date where they offer bonus cash back, or they may have a specific store that's offering bonus cash back for a limited time, or maybe it's a holiday. And of course they want you to spend your money using their app versus someone else's app. And so they may offer that bonus cash back when a Cyber Monday or Black Friday comes around. And so just because you're getting that bonus offer that's coming around, you don't want to spend just because you saw, oh, this app is now, or this store is now giving 10% cash back when they normally only give 2%. So let me go and buy something now while it's 10%. No, you should still stick to whatever you would buy normally. And so if there is something maybe that you are waiting to buy, whether it's waiting on the price to go down or maybe waiting on the actual cash back to increase before you bought it, then that's okay. But again, the key is sticking to things that you're gonna purchase, even if you weren't gonna get cash back or even if you weren't gonna get a discount. Those are the things that you wanna make sure you're maximizing when you receive cash back for those items. And so for instance, if you're signing up for a credit card and you know that credit card has a bonus period, which could be maybe three months to where you have a certain amount of spending that you have to do within that time period in order to get whatever the bonus points or the bonus cash back is, then before you even apply for that credit card, you should already have a plan for how you're gonna reach whatever that limit is or that minimum spending that you have to reach in order to get that bonus. And so I did a video in the past where when I signed up for the Chase Sapphire card. And so I gave the whole plan of how I plan to reach that minimum spend limit and I already had that lined up before I even applied for the credit card. And so if you're applying for a credit card in order to get cash back or in order to get reward points, you should already know exactly how much you need to spend and how you're gonna reach that limit before you even try to apply for the card. So there are three simple ways that you can actually increase the amount of cash back that you receive per transaction. And you can do this without necessarily increasing the amount of spending that you would normally do. And so the first option is to make sure that whatever cash back credit card or points reward card that you're using on a regular basis, make sure that you have it connected to all of the apps that you're gonna use in order to earn cash back in your cash back stacking strategy. And this is especially important if you're using one of the cash back apps that automatically recognizes your purchases. And so you don't have to necessarily go in the app and make a decision on what you're gonna purchase you just make sure that you have that credit card connected to the app and as long as you go to the store and you do your normal spending then you'll get the cash back that you're supposed to receive from that specific cash back app and this is actually the best route to go because that way you don't even have to think about whether or not you're gonna earn cash back if you're going to a store that allows you to get cash back or allows you to earn stock back you're gonna automatically get it as long as you use the credit card that you have linked to those apps second depending on the app and what the rules are for those specific cashback apps. You may be able to link the cards of an authorized user, but make sure you check the rules for each cashback apps to see if that is actually possible. Once you sign in to, let's say your city card, your Capital One account in those cashback apps, if they don't recognize the authorized user within the app, then that means you probably can't use the authorized user for that specific cashback app in order to earn those points or earn the cash back. So in those cases, you wanna make sure that you as the account owner are actually making the purchase in those instances. And third and most important is to do your research. And so when you're signing up for a cashback card or a rewards credit card, you wanna really think about your normal spending. What type of card is gonna give you the most bang for your buck based on your spending? And so personally, I like using cashback apps. I do use travel rewards cards as well, but my whole preference is cashback because I have more flexibility with what I can do with the cash. I can use it to pay the balance of the card that I just used. I can use it to invest in stock once I actually withdraw the cash, or I can use it to pay for items in the future instead of actually using my credit card. I can use my rewards balance to make those purchases. And so of course, watching my YouTube channel is one part of your research. You're learning about the different available cashback apps and the stockback apps, and you're learning about the different credit cards out there, which will allow you to earn cash back on every purchase that you make on your credit card. And so while cashback apps may not be the thing for you or earning 
actual cash back may not be your thing. Maybe travel rewards points are. And of course, you want to choose the credit card that fits your lifestyle and the way you spend money. And of course, cash back is just one way that you can earn money on your spending. And that could range from just a couple of dollars or maybe a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars, depending on the amount of money that you spend over the course of a year or many years. But what I personally like to do with my cash back is to actually invest. And so whenever I receive cash back from the cash back cards or the many cash back apps that I use, I then transfer that money over to M1 Finance. M1 Finance is an investment app that allows you to invest in fractional shares. And so you can invest in up to 100 different companies by making your own pie. And a pie is essentially just your portfolio of stocks. And all you need is a minimum of $25 to invest in multiple companies. And it doesn't matter how much the individual individual stock of that company cost, all you need is a minimum of $1 per company out of that $25 and it will go into whatever stocks that you choose to put in your portfolio. And so in addition to earning that cash back on all of your purchases, you can then transform that cash back into investments into different companies, whether it's the companies that you're actually shopping with or it's other companies that you're interested in owning, you can use that cash back to actually invest in the market. And so technically you're never even using your personal funds or your discretionary income to actually invest in the market. You can use your cash back instead and so it's essentially free money to invest with. It's also a great way to actually boost up your savings. And so if you need to boost up your emergency funds or your savings account, you can use that cash back to add to your savings account if you don't necessarily want to invest that money. Because if you think about it, the majority of the items that you're gonna purchase on your credit card are consumable items. You're gonna buy food, you're gonna buy goods like toothpaste or toilet paper, or you're gonna buy clothes. You're gonna buy things that are immediately gonna be consumed, may be consumed over maybe a couple months or a year, or even if it's not consumed like clothing, it's probably gonna lose its value as soon as you leave the store or as soon as you wear the item. Now, of course, there are some items like Jordans or other popular brand items that you can actually buy and you can resell them for a higher amount. But for most of them, if they're actually used, you're not gonna get the same value out of that product. And so most of the things that you're actually earning cash back on, they're gonna lose value. And so investing your cash back is just one way to earn from those consumable items. And so the moral of the story is don't chase cash back. Whenever you get cash back from your credit card or from other apps, the point is to maximize on what you're earning from the spending that you're gonna do anyway. So if you've ever found yourself thinking about how you can spend more in order to earn more cash back, just don't do it. Don't make any arbitrary goals that don't really make sense that are just gonna cause you to spend more money. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you're not already a member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching, have a great day.